the Immaculate Constellation program, it keeps getting brought up. And the question was, will this be discussed at the hearing? This was a big, we looked at these things that were kind of coming out in the news. And recently, Michael Schellenberger had this article talking about this program, which is essentially a, um, the, a, a reverse engineering program, then that was the actual name, and it wasn't supposed to get out. It did. Other people started talking about it, and Schellenberger was told, you know, he, he tried to get a, a response from the Pentagon. They didn't answer him back for a while, and so then the question was, is this a coincidence that it's coming out, this information is coming out, you know, right around this time where, I mean, we're less than a month away from this November 13th hearing. So there was an interesting video I played on UAP Tuesday with Jeremy Corbell and this clip from Weaponized with him and George Knapp, and they were talking about the things that were coming, and, and there's, there's more about it. And they were pretty in tune with the last hearing and the things that happened with that hearing. So they started talking about the hearing this time around and whether or not this program, the Mexican Const, uh, Constellation, is going to be um, spoken about. They say yes. They say it will, but there's a, a little bit of... Uh, Here's what happens if anybody messes with this type of thing inside of it. But take a look at this. People's names aren't leaked. If information isn't leaked, the world will learn about it on November 13th. There is a way in which the world is 100% no stopping it, going to learn about it on November 13th for the, US, for the congressional hearings. Now, there's a dramatic way that can happen and an undramatic way. If anything were to, if anybody were to fuck with witnesses or us, or anybody involved, it's going to be dramatic. And, and we don't want that. We want the information out. And if it's the dramatic way, then all of a sudden, other people coming forward too. So what's that mean? Um, I mean, th th we've heard it before, where the, it's like the easy way, the hard way type conversation, right? And I guess you could say, well, nothing's really happened since they said that last time. And I guess the argument is Lou Elizondo. I guess the argument is uh, Chris Mellon talking more about this stuff. I guess the, the Michael Schellenberger stuff is part of that argument. The James Fox stuff coming up, I guess that's still more information. But it's I, it's still the same kind of people that have been talking, right? There hasn't been – there is, of course, this new whistleblower, I guess, attached – to the Michael Schellenberger report that could be something brand new, and maybe that's what Jeremy Corbell is talking about, that if these witnesses aren't messed with, that they're not tampered with, which they, anytime in the past, even when you talk to Tim Burchett, he talked about it in his News Nation, where he said that they had released all the names of people that were coming forward for that hearing in, that happened in, um, was it August of last year, or 2023, and then once they released the names that were going to, NASA got involved with a lot of them and said, no, 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 don't do that. And then they didn't. And so a lot of those people didn't. There were supposed to be a lot more witnesses that came forward besides just Fravor Graves, Graves and, um, and Grush. So I guess that's partially what he's talking about is as long as that whoever, if these names aren't exposed and if there's maybe behind the scenes, these programs are trying to get to these witnesses and, they're trying to either figure out who they are or where they are or, or how to stop them, how to discredit them, whatever it might be. And maybe that's what he's saying. And the question is, for me, I, I mean, I honestly think it, what it answers is that I do believe that this program will be spoken about at the hearing, and it should be. And then it's the same way when, when asked about I mean, anybody who's talking about this, anybody who's running this is talking about, um, this hearing, it seems like they're all pretty aware. It can't be I heard from a guy who heard from a guy who heard from a guy. It's got to be kind of mind-blowing stuff. It's got to be stuff that really changes the game in general, or you don't do any more of these. You have to, you got to do something big. And I think that by having these types of witnesses, because we're only, you know, like I said, less than a month away. From hearing about this thing the question is will there be any impact on it whatsoever will but i think the most important part of this story because it's we can argue forever about whether or not catastrophic disclosure and all that stuff will happen should happen could happen because that's all like because 
you'll be sitting around going, oh, oh. because even I'm starting to figure, think though, less and less that even though there are a lot of people inside of the government who are trying, I'm thinking less and less that this is going to come from, from the government at all. Um, because even Danny Sheehan had posted something. Remember when they passed all the UAPDA stuff last year? That the one big thing that was supposed to happen was in October. That's when they could start knocking on the doors and getting stuff from the government portion of that that, that kind of classified stuff. All that stuff. Well, now they pushed it back to 2025. Nobody knew about that, and that just came out. That was another report today. That it was oh, we we'll still do we'll still going to do that, but it's it's another year. And I said when when Pavel had sent that to me, and I said, yeah. And then in 2025, right before, it's like, oh, I got pushed back to 2029. Um, so that's why I'll be changing my tune if something significant happens at the hearing. If it's like, you know, that's all anybody's talking about. That's that's what the hearing should be in November. The hearing should be that someone who right now is not aware of this channel, not aware of anything that there is even a hearing, not aware of anything that's even going on the last year with all this stuff. That person cannot miss the information that comes out about this hearing on the news. That's what needs to happen. The person who's just right now clueless to all this stuff can't get away from the news and the information that comes out about that hearing. That's what needs to happen at this hearing. It can't just be for me and you, people who are watching. You, if you're watching this channel, you have an interest in this subject. You've been either been watching for a while, or you just stumbled upon because you're like, oh, I've been following this topic, and here's another person talking about it, and I think the more people, the better, right? And that exact that that's exactly the mentality. However, we got to get it to the people who just still think it's, you know, doesn't they don't even think there's things in the sky. They know nothing about the Langley stuff. They know nothing at all. More answers and more coverage on the answers. So when it comes to this program, that's part of what is, I think, going to be so important that if it's a heavy focus, as they've mentioned, that there is reverse engineering programs, if they can prove that there is indeed a reverse engineering program and that there are indeed craft, that's a game changer, right? That's a game changer. Now, we'll kind of as they've told before, as Lou Elizondo has said, as Jeremy Corbell has said, as many people have said before, there are really clear pictures out there. Show those MFs. Show them. Show, as Pacino says in Heat, give me all you got. Give me all you got. Because that's what has to happen. Combine that with what's been going on with Langley, you know, or the, the investigation. Did they find anything more with it? What were those lights? Did it have anything to do with this? Link it all together. Put together your report. And I'll tell you, one of the reasons I said I don't think that's going to come from the government disclosure, because I don't have confidence in the presentation thus far. Some of the people who've been really involved in it didn't even know there was going to be a hearing. I knew, and they didn't. That, that, that's a problem. I can barely find my pants in the morning, and yet I knew about this hearing, and the, and the people who are supposed to be doing this don't. They don't know. Uh, I think they're hearing. Oh, is that? Oh, I got some names for our witnesses. It's like, if you treat it like that, it's got to be treated like the most important topic in the world because it should be the most important topic in the world, especially if your imagination goes to a place and that turns out to be what it is. And the fact that you don't know about that you're not sure what that is. I don't know. I, oh, is that a? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll be there. This is not a a, a a keg party. So, I don't know, man. What do you make of all this? Put your comments in there. Tell me. You think that this is going to be a heavy focus at the next hearing? Are they going to really focus in on this program? Is this whistleblower going to be as much of a groundbreaking witness as Grush was? Are they going to have few of those, or is it going to be much to do about nothing? What say you? Put your comments in there as we get closer. We'll be covering this topic more and more and more as we get right around the corner to November 13th. So I'll probably, depending on when it is, I'll probably do a watch along to it, and um, we can all watch it together, see if there's anything, any information. Um, but that's it. 
put your comments in there. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that. Thank you to a whole bunch of new members on the channel, so I want to say thank you to that. Um, and if you're not a member and you just want to help out the channel, I'll tell you about a great sponsor. I'll tell you about NordVPN, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye-bye. I wanted to tell you about today's sponsor, and that is NordVPN. I think NordVPN is the best. I do. It's really good for sports. Um, there are games sometimes you can't find in your region, and you switch your virtual location. You can switch it to anywhere that is showing the actual event. You can protect your private data, like bank details, passwords, online identity. You know, what's so great about NordVPN, they can switch your virtual location, and it allows you to save money by purchasing flights, hotels, subscriptions from other countries at a cheaper price. NordVPN has a threat protection feature, and it protects you from viruses, malicious malware, and phishing sites. One NordVPN account can be used to up to 10 devices. Now, to get the best discount off your NordVPN plan, you got to go to nordvpn.com slash DTE. Our link will also give you four extra months on the two-year plan. There's no risk with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. The link is in the podcast description below. So thank you to our friends over at NordVPN. You can check it out.